Well, good evening, good evening, good evening. Hello, hello, hello. Let me know if the, the audio is good. It should be good. It looks good. And the video looks like it should be fine tonight. I hope everybody had a great week. And we'll get things started here in just a minute. It just takes a few minutes for folks to uh, get together. So I'd, I'd like to hold off for just a minute. Good to see you in, Aaron. Um, hope, thing, hope things are going well for you out there work camping. Awesome. Uh, thanks. I'm going to probably brutalize your name here, but I'm going to try it. Is it uh, Gaten Gendron? Gaten Gendron? Gaten? Gaten Gendron? I hope I'm getting it close. Uh, from Ontario. Uh, Rockland, Ontario, and uh, uh, Gayton, Gayton, okay, Gayton, thank you, uh, from uh, Rockland, Ontario, Canada, uh, we usually have another Canadian that will join us uh, in the evenings here, uh, he's over in Winnipeg, and that would be Jim, so Gendron, okay, gotcha, Gayton Gendron, thank you so much, and welcome aboard, glad to have you with us. I know you have a question that uh, you submitted over on my website at trbolin.com. And uh, so I'm actually a little prepared. I've got some, uh, I got a little video I can share with you. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, just a minute here, I've got to clear my throat. Hello, Linda Camp Goer One. Anybody else that's in there that would like to uh, drop us a note over in the chat window and say hi tonight, let us know where you're watching from, that would be awesome. You know, I've had a hard time being retired this week, i got to tell you. Actually, for the last three or four weeks. Um, <laughs> I, I'm supposed to be retired, and uh, I think I've been busier the last month than I have since I retired. Um, I think I'd mentioned earlier that I uh, ended up with a, a little bit of side work, uh, a side hustle or whatever, uh, as an outgrowth from my uh, video editing. Um, I uh, um, stumbled across some other work, and it, it, it's been a lot of work the last couple of weeks, which is just fine, but uh, I haven't had a chance to do much. Uh, but I do have the RV nearly ready to uh, sell, and I guess you'll give you a little update on that. Of course, I've mentioned before that I'm selling my 40-foot uh, Class A RV, Rusty. Uh, it's a 2004 Newmar Dutch Star. Uh, and, well, I'm actually just trading. I won't be, tr well, I don't know. Anyway, what I'm going to end up with is a pickup that I can do uh, uh, more like expedition travel. Go out for a week or two and then come back. So, uh that should be uh, happening here this summer if everything works out right. But I finally did, uh, I got the paint ordered. Um, I was going to uh, use vinyl wrap, but as I mentioned last week, that's been back ordered 12 times. So I finally threw in the towel on that, and I went and got some paint match, and they're uh, mixing it up in a spray can, like a rattle can. Uh, so I'll be able to finish that little project, and then I should be pretty much ready to put it on the market. Um, it's been requested that I do some videos on selling the RV, and I plan on doing that. I've got some uh, work that I've already done uh, and have produced and in the can uh, that will be part of the video that I uh, present and prepare for you that uh, goes into how I sold it, or if I sold it. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so with that, um, again, be sure and uh, drop a note over in the uh, chat window to let me know where you're watching from. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> as I mentioned, uh, Gayton uh, Gendron, uh, a new viewer uh, up in uh, Canada, has a question about his uh, 510, his Sealand 510 toilet. It's a vacuum breaker. Larry, I was just chatting with my dad today, and he said you guys only got an inch of snow last week. <laughs> nice to have you aboard. And Gary Boyd, good day to you too, and uh, welcome in. <clears throat> anyway, uh, yeah, Gaten, uh, if you uh, want to go ahead and ask your question, then I'll do what I can to answer it for you. And, of course, that's what we're here for. If you have a question that you just can't 
uh, figure out. This is a safe zone. There are no stupid questions. Okay. I used to say this. I used to teach classes, uh, uh, adult education, community education type classes for years. And I used to always say that there's no dumb question. The only dumb question is the question that didn't get answered <clears throat> or didn't get asked. And either way, uh, this is a safe zone, and you can ask any question you might have, no matter uh, how goofy or uh, not goofy it is, uh, or even how difficult. Uh, a part of what I'm trying to achieve here also is that to bring together, you know, some old crusty guys like me and Aaron uh, Jemison and Larry McBride, who've been RVing a long time and have seen a few things, uh, and maybe if I don't have the answer, they might. Uh, and then in a worst case scenario, if I can't figure it out, then I'll take a little note and uh, research it for you this week and uh, report back on it next week. So anyway, if we still have you out there, uh, uh, Gaten, uh, be sure and go ahead and ask your question. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> I have it and I hope uh, you all do too. So he's got a Sealand 510, which is the same a toilet I have in my RV and I've worked on it uh, in fact there are two separate videos on my channel around that uh, one of them is specifically addressing the vacuum breaker so let me just slip over here and I'm gonna do a quick uh, change here let's go up here to the main display you get to see under the covers here for just a minute and that's what the live stream looks like from my end and there's his note and we'll close this and then I'm gonna come over here and this is my editing software I'll just bring <clears throat> this up full size oops that's not what I wanted I'm assuming you can see this I don't have the screen in front of me to check the quality let me do that real quick so you can see what's going on there we go and good so what he's talking about is this device right here. Now, what you see me doing here is is installing a new one in my uh, toilet. And there it is right there. That is the vacuum breaker. What the vacuum breaker is designed to do is <clears throat> stop any water from in the toilet bowl flowing back into your fresh water supply. Uh, they... Uh, what happens is is it prevents any vacuum or suction being created uh, when the uh, uh, when the toilet flushes or if by any chance it overflows there's a slight chance that it could um, contaminate your fresh water supply so most equipment like uh, toilets like that uh, will have a vacuum breaker uh, he says here, it's been leaking out the top vent hole f about a tablespoon, teaspoon or a tablespoon, every time they flush. You have the one with the spray hose. New vacuum breaker also leaked. Okay, I suspect it's the gasket. Uh, when you changed out the vacuum breaker, did you change out the little gasket? Let me flip back over here. I know this is cumbersome. And I'm still, <clears throat> the uh, switcher I want has back ordered so I can switch between these screens and make it a little faster but let me come in here and let's pop this up full size come out of that over here this device right there there's a gasket that sets in there and that should have come with the uh, replacement vacuum breaker at least mine did That could be the source of your leak. So I would double check that uh, and make sure that. And uh, let me get over here to the chat and see. Uh, new vacuum breaker also leaked. So that would be my guess is that there's maybe something in that, in and around that gasket. It's a rubber gasket that sits in that hole and then the vacuum breaker plugs into that gasket. And so I would check that very carefully, make sure there's nothing. Uh, you know, uh, any kind of debris, paper, or anything like that that might be stuck on it that might cause it to leak out a little bit. Because what that does is that it is also the bowl wash. And so inside the rim of the toilet bowl, uh, there will be water that swirls around, and that water helps to flush the con contents of the stool 
into the holding tank. Uh, I'm going to get to you in just a moment. Yes, it did, and I changed it. The leak was out of the top small hole. Okay. That is actually probably, well, that small hole that's in the top of that valve is the act where the actual air, make what they call makeup air, comes into the, into the vacuum breaker. Um, when you flush the to toilet, does, is there lots of water that comes into the bowl from the rim? You know, like you would in your normal household toilet, the, your RV toilet works sort of the same way. Uh, there should be water in that, uh, uh, coming out of that rim and going down that bowl, you know, cleaning out the toilet bowl. So, uh, uh, that's a question for you there, uh, Gayton. All right, uh, while he's answering, let's go over to Camp Gore 1, Linda. Uh, you have the 91 Toyota Horizon. The roof is kind of soft in a couple places. Use the tape on it, and Henry's. It peeled a bit, so I peeled off the Henry's. What else can I do? Water leaks in AC area. And you used a turnabond. Um, have you looked under the shroud? Have, have you taken the shroud off? to uh, look and see, make sure that it's not leaking in around that. And that's a good question, Aaron. Uh, I, I kind of doubt it that she would have changed the AC seal, but that's another source of a leak, uh, would be that seal. Uh, there's typically a rubber seal or gasket that sits underneath the AC. Um, and uh, seals the water from getting in around the base of the AC and the top of the roof. Uh, the leaking water in the ceiling light area is probably because uh, the AC might be leaking, uh, there might be water coming in, uh, and it would leak into the roof and then it would move transversely uh, along the roof. So it could flow along the roof looking for the light penetration to come out. Uh, so if that makes any sense, is it leaking when it rains or is it just leaking all the time? Like it's the, <clears throat> like it's the condensate, like the condensate, the water that condenses out of the air when you cool it, Linda. Exactly, Aaron. I'm going to check and see if the drain holes in the AC are plugged. <clears throat> Okie okay, doke. Uh, okay, here's uh, Gaten's back. Toilet works fine otherwise. It just spits out the top hole every time we flush. If I depress the flush pedal very slowly, it does not seem to leak as much. Um, how? Uh, okay, it could be uh, a water pressure problem. Um, are you on city water? Or does it leak even if you're using water out of your holding tank using the pump? Um, if you're on city water, it could be you have a little bit too much pressure uh, because if you open the valve slowly, that's going to slow down how fast the pressure rushes into that system. And it could be maybe you just have a little bit too much pressure in your water line. So do you have, uh, are you on city water? And if you are, do you have a pressure regulator on your city water so that you can limit it. Typically, most RVs are built and designed for 60 PSI city water, 60 pounds per square inch. <clears throat> That's actually quite a bit, but I've been at some RV parks where it was high as 80 or 90. I have a water pressure gauge that I would use, uh, and I just left it on my hose. And I would use it every time at every RP park I was at because you just never knew. If it's under pressure, if it's less than 60, you don't know. If it's over 60, it definitely holds that pressure down. Uh, so that might be something, too, is that if, if you're on city water and you have the, the incoming water pressure is over 60 PSI, that might cause it um, to leak like that, uh, Gaten. <clears throat> yes, when it rains. Okay, <clears throat> sorry, can't go one. Uh, it, it leaks only when it rains. Okay, 
Then, uh, and let's see, I thought I saw a note here. Let me go back and uh, let me try this. Yes, it did. And I changed it. Okay, sorry, that's uh, uh, Camp Gorowan and leaking water in the ceiling area. Yes, the AC has the big gasket. Have you changed that gasket, uh, Linda? I kind of doubt it because that requires you removing the AC unit, which um, is not all that much work, um, but um, it might be a little bit intimidating. Okay, um, back to Gaten. Did not try with pump. Was always on campground water. Had for water pressure regulator. Think it's set at 35. Could the flush valve have something to do with this? It could. Um, yeah, it, it, I guess it could. I'm just trying to think of a scenario where the flush valve might cause the pressure. Yeah. Um, hmm. I, 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 I suppose it could. Uh, Gaten, but I don't know that that would be the first place I would look to figure out why it was leaking. Your hoses are not crimped at all, right? The hoses are all straight uh, and all that. And that's a great question, Aaron. Uh, how old is the regulator? And then does the regulator have a pressure gauge on it? Or is it just uh, uh, just a, you know, a standard pressure regulator without the pressure gauge on it? Uh, Camp Gore, is there something I can glue to the whole roof like a sheet of rubber material? Uh, okay, you took the AC unit off and replaced the gasket. Okay, well, it may not be your AC that's leaking. It might be something else. Um, the Eterna Bond would be really good for sealing the seams around the perimeter of the roof, if that's the source. Near that AC unit, are there other roof penetrations like, uh, say, the uh, like a fan, like a kitchen fan, you know, like a roof kitchen fan? Uh, are there any vents up there? There will be a vent that comes up from your holding tank um, that maybe it's leaking around that. Now, water leaks can be a real persnickety thing to try to sort out because that water can move a long ways up in the roof. Let me ask this, too, uh, Linda. Uh, when I say Linda, I mean Camp Gore 1. I'll just call you Camp Gore. But um, are the soft spots near the AC unit or are the soft spots in other places in the roof? Typically, soft spots means there's a leak and that the plywood that the roof is made of is delaminating. You might remember the picture I showed last week of my roof uh, when I before I replaced it. I don't have that handy here, but it had a really bad soft spot in it, and the reason it was soft was because water had leaked into it and caused the plywood to delaminate. Okay, again, it seems to do okay. We're back to the uh, leaking vacuum breaker here. It seems to do it as I first depress the pedal. Hoses are good, okay. No gauge, just an inline regulator. All right, it could be your regulators just wore out. Um, I'm not familiar up in Ontario. How hard is your water? Do you have really hard water? Um, do you have like a water softener in your home? How, how hard is your water? What I'm thinking is, is there could be some calcium uh, or iron deposits uh, built up in that valve. And, and causing it to surge in pressure. Um, I, 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 would, I would, I suspect, I'm kind of stumbling here because I'm just trying to think through this logically. I, how old is your pressure regulator? That's the other question I want to ask. Um, okay, uh, Gary Boyd, could be blockage in the feed line. Yeah, that's a good point, Gary. Um, there could be something in there, and I was thinking maybe calcium, uh, uh, maybe magnesium, because it depends on, I'm, I'm not sure about Ontario what kind of water there is. Um, I don't know if I blocked a comment. Aaron, you haven't blocked any comments from Gary Boyd, have you? Um, we're, I'm looking into that, uh, Gary. 
Uh, okay, so uh, Linda Camp Goer, back to the leaking roof. Uh, maybe it could be coming in somewhere. The soft spot is near the front of the coach in front of the AC. Okay, thank you, Aaron. I don't know that we blocked a comment, Gary. Now, it could be, was there a link, a URL, uh, a website link? Uh, because the way I have my uh, stuff set up is, is that I block links, except that I was able to give Aaron permission to post links uh, with uh, URLs uh, in it. So uh, I gave the answer and said something to make me laugh. Uh-oh. Well, I'm, I don't know. Did you see it not post, Gary? Uh, because that's really the only restrictions I have. It's just if there's a link URL in it. I was getting way too many spam links uh, from on my videos. Uh, you know, these spammers uh, put a link in there uh, and it points you to some damn porn site or some site where they're trying to hack your hack you. And uh, I'm so I finally just had to break down and block it. Okay, uh, back to the comments here. By the way, if you're if you're just sitting in there lurking and you have a question, uh, be sure and go ahead and throw it into the live chat window. Also, I'd love to know where you're watching from this evening. Uh, it's always exciting to uh, to see where people are watching from. Uh, okay, I. Um, your comment is dimmed out. Interesting. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> you did make me laugh. Okay, Gary. Um, Gary responds to uh, uh, Gaten's uh, problem. Uh, toilet has blockage in the water feed line and toilet has a prostate problem. Yeah. <laughs> Runs in squirts. <laughs> Uh, no soft water here. Already cleaned the flush valve. Okay. Um, now we got another Little Rock in the house. A little, another Arkansas are in the house. Welcome, Will. Um, I'm going to I'm going to put this in as a uh, I'm going to look into that for you, Gaten. Uh, that leaking. And I, you said that the new one does it too. So to me, that could be a water pressure problem. I think probably the first thing and the easiest thing I would do before I went and ran out and bought a new regulator is um, to, uh, to uh, put a little water in your holding tank and run it on the pump and see if it still leaks when you're on pumped water from the tank versus city water. If it doesn't leak when you're running pump water from the from your holding tank, because the pressure of your pump is going to be a lot less than 60 PSI. It varies, but usually they're around 40. Uh, so uh, that, would, that would tell you right then uh, that maybe it's not your pressure regulator, or maybe it is. If, if it doesn't do it when you're running on the pump, then I would, su I would su uh, suggest a new pressure regulator. Excuse me. Uh, okay, let's see. Okay. <laughs> Gaten says, no, that would be me, Gary. <laughs> Hi, Sue. Uh, great to have you along in northern Arizona. Uh, I'm assuming you're up in the Flagstaff area. That's, uh, uh, that's some beautiful country up there in uh, northern Arizona. Um, so, yeah, especially around flag. Uh, let's see, great idea. Try that as soon as I'm sure dewinterizing is safe. Yeah, still have below 32 degrees last week. Yeah, we're, we're getting a few still freezing nights here in southeast Idaho as well. That's a good point. Uh, that is a very good point, uh, Aaron. Uh, flush your system, water system with vinegar to break up any buildup. And that's actually quite easy to do. Um, but... Uh, I would I would double check and run that pump first, and if it still leaks when you're on pump water, then I would get a different regulator, and then if it still leaks, 
uh, check in next week, and I might have an answer for you because I am will I will research that this week and see what I can find out there in the forums. If you like what you're seeing, be sure and give me that thumbs up. That's always great. Uh, that really helps get the video ranked up and gets more people to see it. And that's uh, really a good thing. I had something else really exciting happen this past week. Uh, and actually happened yesterday. And that is that I passed 30,000 subscribers. I'm humbled, shocked, appalled. I guess I better close that down because... Uh, the sun's starting to set out there and blinding everybody. Um, yeah, I, uh, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. I am going to do something special on next week's uh, live stream. And I'm going to do a little giveaway. Um, I'm going to pick up uh, an Amazon gift card and have a little contest. Um, uh, and give away a $50 Amazon gift card next week in... Um, celebration of my 30,000 subscribers so be sure and tune in next week and uh, you might get a chance to win a $50 gift card from yours truly uh, because I passed 30,000 yeah I know thanks Linda uh, Barker it's amazing isn't it uh, camp goer Linda thanks uh, you know I, I, I like I say I'm humbled you know, everybody that supports me on my Amazon store, I just can't say thank you enough. Uh, there's a link in the description below. Of course, by law, I'm required to say you paid the same price, but as an Amazon affiliate, I get a very small commission. It ranges from 1% to 3 to 4%, and every little bit helps. Particularly, and for those of you that are new to the chat, I, uh, I, I made a mistake last, well, early this spring, and I left one of my bags in the car that had uh, one of my GoPros, some spare batteries, a couple of small tripods, a microphone uh, stand, my wireless microphones. It was quite uh, a traumatic <laughs> experience. Um, it was probably close to about $1,400 worth of stuff that I'd left in my car, and um, it, it, got, it got gone. So I'm still kind of recovering from that. So the Amazon, the little bit I get from Amazon is going to help me uh, get a new wireless microphone this month. Um, because the wireless microphone is really critical, especially like when I'm recording the RV how-tos and those sorts of things. Um, you know, the camera, you kind of have to have a bit away. And it's sure nice to have that microphone. It sure makes the audio so much better. So that's a long-winded way to say thank you so much for supporting me on Amazon. There's a link in the description below. And, of course, another little uh, commercial here before we get back to the comments. Uh, my website is a resource that's loaded with all kinds of good stuff. I've got articles out there uh, that aren't on YouTube yet. I'm still working on a couple of those. Uh, so uh, if... Uh, you want to go out and check out my website at trbolin.com. You can also uh, see a lot of my photography that I've got out there, as well as uh, RV uh, travel logging and uh, some RV how-to. So I uh, appreciate it when you go over there and visit my website at trbolin.com. All right, enough of the commercial. Back to the comments. Uh, vinegar and baking soda flush might work. Yeah, that could but it's probably, in, in that particular case, uh, going back to uh, Gayton's problem with his leaking vacuum breaker and maybe having some contamination in the water lines, uh, probably better to use just vinegar in that case because if it's hard water, uh, the vinegar will dissolve the uh, calcium that's in that water uh, and uh, break it up. So if there's something that's causing the water pressure to surge or whatever because of contamination, uh, that vinegar will help uh, melt that calcium and will help it wash away. Uh, let's see. Uh, I am going to go with the road. I had a Sennhauser. Uh, Aaron Jameson asked, what wireless mic system? I'm going to go with the road. Um, I had the Sennhauser GK3. It's a $600 microphone setup. And... Um, it's the Cadillac. It's the de facto standard, and I loved it. 
I just don't know if I can justify another one. The road's about half that price. And from what I've heard and can tell, they work just as good as the Sennhauser. Now, again, I'm an old radio guy, right? I've been, I worked in radio for years. This is a Sennhauser microphone. I have Sennhauser headphones here somewhere, right here. You know, so it's Fords and Chevys. Uh, you know, it's sure Sennhauser technique. Uh, you know, there's any number of those. It's kind of just, I guess, what you get used to using. Uh, but um, I'll probably go with the uh, Rode this time. It, and it's a it's a pure wireless. The microphone's wireless. Uh, the receiver is wireless until you have to plug it into your camera, obviously. Uh, the thing about the uh, Sennhauser was is it was a wired mic to a belt pack then wireless to the receiver, and then, of course, a wire from the receiver to connect it into the camera. It was a great, it was a great one. Uh, I sure do miss it. Um, I've been trying to do some uh, recording outside, been repairing some fence and doing some other stuff that I wish I uh, had a wireless mic for. Uh, okay. Uh, well, okay, what wireless? Larry, um, yeah, you know, I just posted a uh, the, the spring tune-up checklist and maintenance over on my website. I believe Aaron just posted the link to it. Oh, yes, he did. Uh, just a couple comments below you. And um, um, so that would be, at the end of that article, there's a checklist. And uh, there's probably 30 or 40 items on the checklist. It'll probably help you remember uh, if you're getting old, like uh, a lot of us, uh, you know, every little bit helps. Hi, Julie Gage uh, from out in Bonita, California. Thank you. Glad to have you aboard. You were moving around too, right? Weren't you in Vegas and like a couple weeks ago? <laughs> oh, and I see Sue Kelly uh, popped in from, um, was it Sholo? Yeah, Sholo, that's a really cool town. I did some dry camping out in that area uh, about four years ago up near Sholo. Beautiful country. OMG. All right. Uh, I ha you have the road and love it. Okay, good. Good to know, Aaron. Yeah. Um, I was talking to another person that I know that um, uh, doesn't have a YouTube channel, but he has the he has a need for a wireless microphone. He does live remotes uh, on the radio. And uh, he started using that, and he says it's been a great, great microphone. He's really happy with it. Okay. Um, uh, question in from Gaten. Do I just pump the vinegar at the pump while flushing the toilet? Suppose that would be the most efficient way to treat just the toilet lines. The pump is just behind the toilet, actually. Yeah, that would probably be good. Do you have a winterization system for your RV? I know in my RV, um, and you could buy a winterization kit. Uh, they're really simple to install. But what it does is that it allows you to run antifreeze through the system, through your water system, uh, or anything else. Um, I can actually uh, use mine, and I've had to do. I've done this before. Is I've been out boondocking, and ran out of water. There was potable water close by. Um, I didn't have a jug, but I had a cooler that wasn't that didn't have anything in it. So I scrubbed the cooler out really well, and then I went down and filled the cooler full of water, drug the cooler back to the RV, and then using my winterization kit, I was able to stick the hose, the suction hose, turn on my pump, flip the valves in the appropriate way, and run that roughly 45 gallons of water from that cooler into my holding tank. And, um, and that's, that's how I winterize as well, is, is that you could just take the hose and stuff it right into a jug of antifreeze and kick the pump on, and it'll pump that uh, antifreeze through your entire system. Uh, that's a long way to say it wouldn't hurt to go ahead and run the vinegar through your whole water system. Uh, and, in fact, it would be a good idea because that will actually sanitize your water system just as well as chlorine bleach. And... Uh, so, you know, that's something you know you could do. But yeah, you could definitely just run it into the toilet line. It could be you could do something as simple as just busting the line loose at the valve, drain the water out, hold it up and pour some vinegar in down through the hose. 
<clears throat> stick it back on the valve and let it sit there for 30, 45 minutes and then flush it because you want to give it a little bit of time to uh, soften up that calcium and dissolve it. Uh, do you have any kind of calcium deposits in the toilet, Gaten? <laughs> getting old, Larry. I'll turn 60. Larry McBride's comment, getting old. I'll, he turns 64 next month. I have a list to go through each year, but always find something that needs looked at. <clears throat> yeah, that's the truth. Uh, and it's it's super important and you know honestly I have a video so close to being ready to go on this it's just I haven't had the chance to go back and just polish it uh, on t spring tune-up and and what's your best practices for doing spring tune-ups um, I, I think I'm finally getting ahead I you know I mentioned earlier at the beginning I know there's a, quite a few new viewers that uh, for being retired I've sure been busy the last six weeks or so uh, but things are actually starting to settle down. I might actually get to do some uh, yard work and stuff like that finally. Yeah, that's a uh, um, good point, Aaron. Uh, put it in the holding tank and do the whole water system. And by the way, that will help sanitize just as well as chlorine bleach uh, using vinegar. All right. Uh, Okay, Deborah posted a question. Did you post it in the chat, Deborah, or was it over on my website? Because I didn't see. Let me go just double check here and see if I missed something. Um, no, that's a spam. That's a spam. I'm going to check one more place. If you wouldn't mind posting your question again, uh, I. Sorry about that, but I just looked. I don't see uh, the question that you may have asked anywhere. And I would sure love to answer your question, Deborah. So is it something I missed in the chat? Do we have something funky going on in the chat? I know that uh, we had one user that said his comment had been grayed out, and we haven't, we haven't moderated any comments. Um, you know, fortunately, we've had a, you know, this has been a good, clean show. We don't get spammers or somebody in here that wants to go off at the mouth. Okay, so you do have a winterization kit, uh, Gaten. That's great. Yeah, if you don't want to, if you don't want to do the whole tank, yeah, you can just use the, just get yourself a bucket and mix up a good, strong solution of vinegar and water. Run it through your water lines, flush them out really well, let them stand for 15 minutes or so, and then flush them really good again, and then flush them with some fresh water. It might take, you know, five or so minutes of flushing to get the vinegar smell out, but it'll get out. Um, and, uh, you know, and again, that will, it will help uh, clear out any hard water that may have accumulated in that. That's a good point, Gary. Uh, cleaning vinegar is five or six percent. Uh, uh, acetic acid and regular vinegar is three to four percent so uh, you can use cleaning vinegar um, as well <clears throat> okay uh, to start the geomethadini updates uh, well no not really um, except to say that any good dish soap will work Dawn, palm olive, joy any good quality dish soap works. Any good quality concentrated degreaser works. So I tend to use the Zep Orange Cleaner. There's also Simple Purple. Make sure you use the concentrated heavy duty degreaser though. Not the pre-diluted, not the use it out of the bottle one. The one you have to dilute is the best. And because when you put it in the tank, obviously it gets diluted. Uh, and borax or Calgon um, and or uh, OxyClean, all three of those work as far as a oxygen generating agent. Um, uh, borax and Calgon are about the same price. I, I think the OxyClean is a little bit more expensive uh, on a per tank treatment. But even then, if you're using the geo, bio geo method, um, I try to separate it from the geo method because the geo method technically uses bleach, uh, which we don't want to use at all. 
Um, the tank treatments are less than a dollar, and TST costs that much easy. I had a question come in earlier from a gentleman uh, that wrote a really nice note on my uh, on that holding tank treatment video about how he's pretty much done the same method for about 40 years and never had any trouble with his at all. At 8.20. All right. Um, uh, note to Aaron. Can you scan real quick for Deborah Riddell and see if we missed a question from her? Thank you. Um, Larry. Uh, oh, L Larry is responding to Gaten. He uses bleach mixture to sanitize and then baking soda to take the bleach smell out. And that's a good point. Uh, are you just mixing a really dilute solution of baking soda and water and running it through? Um, I found that just flushing the tank uh, and the water lines for, for four or five minutes, usually the bleach smell will go right away. If you use the right concentration, which is one quarter cup per 16 gallons, you can find a article over on my website at trbolan.com uh, that is a short, easy quick read with a checklist that you can use to sanitize your holding tank. There is also a video in the works on that as well. I just haven't got it to put together yet. I'm very sorry, Deborah. Um, I'm not sure what's going on. Um, we don't see your comment, your question, so if I could beg you to uh, ask it again, um, I would be very appreciative and uh, we'll certainly stick around and answer it. Thank you, Aaron, for doing such a great job. Uh, vinegar will take the bleach out, too. Yes, it will. And vinegar is a very good deodorizer. Oh, okay. Deb, um, do I need a 30-amp service hardwired to run my air conditioner? Probably. Um, most ACs run between... 10 and 15 amps of draw on how much current they will pull. Um, it's a little bit variable on how hard the AC is working and those sorts of things. So when you start to add in all the other load that you might have in your RV, say like a TV or any other AC load, uh, you know, microwaves, toasters, those sorts of things, you could easily uh, exceed the capacity of a standard household outlet, which is 15 amps, usually, occasionally 20 amps. Uh, so being able to run a 30 amp, well, I should say we're being able to run an AC on, and when I say AC, I should say air conditioner, on your household current from a standard household outlet you're probably not going to have very good success. The other thing to keep in mind is the longer the extension cord, the less power that gets to your RV. So if you have a 50-foot extension cord plugged into your house, you're not going to get the full 15 amps at your RV. So that's a long way to say if you want to run uh, AC, then you're probably going to need a 30 amp service um, at a minimum a 30 amp service and that will keep you in line so that you can still run your uh, microwave or any of those other uh, appliances um, that you might have that are run by AC alternating current I hope that helps hope that answered your question Deb Uh, let's see here. Uh, Linda says, seen someone on YouTube say 10-gallon vinegar, 10-gallon water to clean the water tank lines and water heater. Does that make sense? Yeah, one-to-one. -one, I think I, Aaron might have mentioned this too. Uh, that, yeah, there it was. I thought I saw that. One-to-one uh, -one is a good ratio for the vinegar. Um, but 10 gallons of vinegar, that's kind of expensive. 
you know, that's 10 bucks. Well, I guess it's not, you know, vinegar is actually fairly cheap. Uh, in the relative, you know, big scheme of things, it, it, so 10 gallons, you know, that might not be bad, but I've seen one to one. Uh, and um, so I think that's good. Okay, so Deborah, um, it, it looks like you, yeah, it's it's magic here. That's a couple of times um, that uh, the comments have disappeared. We had uh, we had another one that seems okay. Your chat is too lengthy. Okay, um, that's uh, uh, unfortunate, Deb. Um, I know that there is a uh, character limit of 200 characters in comments. Um, so I would invite you to, uh, Deborah, if you wouldn't mind, and if you'd like, you can go over to my website, uh, and or in the description of the video uh, here, there is a link to a page on my uh, website called rv-qa. And uh, you could ask your question there, and uh, I will make it a point to answer that. Um, I'm terribly sorry you had trouble with the con with the uh, live chat this evening. Uh, I apologize uh, s sincerely. Thanks, Deb. I appreciate that. Um, hey there, CNS. Uh, great to have you aboard tonight. Yeah, you're really late. It's almost 10 o'clock. We're back there in Tennessee. Um, the CNS Schoolie Project's uh, joining us, uh, and we gave him a shout-out last week. He's building a school bus. He's building out a schoolie to be an RV. And as a build nerd, um, I found his channel to be really really nice, really good channel. And he just did a lock in his door uh, this week. Um, project turned out really nice. The comments are character limited, yes, to 200 characters. But usually you'll get a warning in the in the chat window when you're trying to um, when you're trying to comment, um, it'll, it'll come up and, uh, it'll warn you that you're almost out of, ch of characters, but yeah, 200 characters is the limit in YouTube's chat window. <clears throat> okay, Deb, Deborah Riddell. Yeah, it, it, feel free to do it here. We're just about, well, we got about 13 minutes and, um, um, or you could submit it on my website. I will answer it immediately, and then I will also answer it on next week's stream. I had a gentleman uh, make a comment on another one of my videos uh, around uh, replacing your RV's roof. I have a whole series of videos about changing your RV's roof, um, and he had, he had requested some help uh, down in Orange County. I asked him to come on the chat tonight. Of course, he's not here, but if anybody's in Orange County... And would like to help somebody put a roof on their RV, uh, drop in me a note, and I'll see if I can connect you guys. Um, if I was in Orange, Orange County, I'd surely go over and help him because I discovered after I did my roof, it's really not that hard. Uh, I've had several questions or comments come in this week on that series of videos, and um, um, another fellow. Oh, this is also up on Facebook. Uh, mentioned that he had replaced his roof on a 40-foot Class A. It took him about 50 hours, and that's about what it took me uh, was about 50 hours. Plus, I had about probably 10 hours, 15 hours into remediating the black mold that had accumulated under the roof from the leak that that uh, I had. Okay, so uh, let's see. Okay, Sue Kelly, how much power do I have to have to run the mini split AC? You have 1,200 watts. Are we talking solar? Um, a mini split, um, I would need to know off the label how many amps it pulls and what kind of voltage. I'm assuming it's 110 volts. Um, how b and if you could tell me how many amps the mini split pulls, then I could probably tell you. I'm assuming, Sue, that you you're, you say you have 1,200 watts. I'm assuming you say solar. Uh, you're 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 uh, talking about solar. <laughs> uh, let's see here, uh, camp goer. What size window AC can be run by generator? 2,200 starting, 2,500 running. 
Uh, you could probably 2200 watts. That's roughly 20 amps. You could run a, 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 a fair size window AC, probably 15 amp. Uh, you should be okay with something around 15 amp. Um, that would probably be around uh, probably 15,000 BTU. That would be a medium sized household type uh, AC unit. Um, yeah, so uh, watch, uh, look at the label rating on it and try to keep it under a 15 amp draw. Uh, Linda. Yeah, there you go. Uh, thanks, uh, Gaten. Yep, 1200 watts at 120 is 10 amps. Uh, okay. Hello, Dream on Wheels. How are you this evening? Welcome aboard. Oh, Gary says it's a 1200 watt mini split, I think. Yeah, so that's roughly 10 amps um, at 120 volts. You're going to want some overhead on that, so you probably want to be thinking about 15 amps uh, because for a very short amount of time, there's a little bit of a surge current uh, that happens. So when electric motor starts, it draws more power uh, than what it's rated on the label. So it might say it's a 10 amp motor, but to get started, it might take 15 amps. But that's just for a very short amount of time, a very minimal amount of time. In fact, in a, in a normal household type situation, it's so fast that the circuit breaker won't trip. In an RV where you're running on an inverter, okay, they're a lot more sensitive to, to current surges like that. And the inverter may trip out if you try to draw too much amperage off of it. Uh, even if you're under the total number of amps you see on the label. I hope that makes sense. That's why they do AC soft starts. I don't know. I guess I'm, I'm assuming, and I don't know this. Maybe somebody in the chat does. Um, if you could put a soft start on a mini split. I don't know why not, because it's essentially the same thing. The only difference is, is that the, air compre or the, uh, the compressor unit is separated by... Uh, uh, supply and suction lines uh, on the AC unit. Um, so there may be something you might have to uh, uh, look into getting a soft start. But yeah, um, okay, catching up on the comments. Okay, under 15 amp. Yeah, Linda, I think that would be safe, Camp Goer. Uh, Oh, and then uh, Camp Gore says she has a refrigerator that she runs too. What I'm not sure, Sue, is, is when you say you have 1,200 watts, is that solar? Um, are you trying to run this off solar and batteries? Jason Mills, awesome to have you aboard. Uh, uh, wife and I would love a brand recommendation or model of RV washer and dryer or combo. Uh, thank you so much, J Jason. The only one that I think is worth its salt is the Splendid. That's probably the Cadillac um, of RV washer dryer combo units. Uh, anybody else have any uh, ideas out there? I had a Splendid in my RV and it worked great. Um, the last year I had it though, I fought it and I fought it and I replaced parts and then it turned out I needed to replace the computer and the computer was $300 and I said, okay, I can do a whole lot of laundry for $300 and so I took it out, excuse me, I took it out and converted the corner into storage. However, I would go with the Splendid, uh, it's the combo unit and in fact they have a really nice one. That's ventless, so you don't even have to put a vent in. On the other hand, the combo washer dryers don't do a lot of laundry. You might get two pairs of pants or a couple of towels. They just don't have a lot of capacity, um, so keep that in mind. But yeah, the Splendid is an amazing unit. Um, I loved mine. 
uh, washer dryer combo. Mine was vented, by the way, but now they, you know, you can get a vented or a non vented one. Okay, uh, yes, she has solar. Uh, yes, there are such a thing as generator mufflers. Um, so if you have a champion, uh, you have my, uh, you have my condolences. <laughs> you know, uh, Harbor Freight makes a lot of good stuff, but them champion generators are loud. I think CNS, um, didn't, CNS, didn't you, weren't you talking about a generator that you had that you thought was pretty quiet that was a, was a, uh, was a Harbor Freight? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to remember. Oh, there you go. Uh, CNS. They bought the LG Ventless. Um, so, CNS, how much was the LG Ventless? Because I know the Splendeeds run about a grand. Alrighty, the email address. I think Aaron shared that with you, uh, Deborah, but it is trbolin, B O W L I N, at gmail.com. So, Jason, there's another uh, suggestion. You might look at the LG Ventless. Um, but the Splendid, yeah, the Splendids are great. Um, and that's most all of the major manufacturers um, in less than a, in a 40 foot or less are providing the, the Splendids. You get into the bigger ones, the big guys, you know, the 45 footers with tag axles and all that uh, fancy stuff. And uh, they start putting in stackables, washer dryer as separate units. Predator, yeah, uh, uh, camp goer, predator. Those are loud too. Um, the problem with putting a muffler on those is that it creates a little back pressure, and it uh, sometimes you can burn the valve, or burn the valves, which will make the uh, generator uh, very angry. <laughs> Uh, oh, I see, Sue. Uh, okay, at least uh, startup power has to be add. I need a, a couple more panels. Okay. So to run a mini split um, on solar is an expensive proposition because you're not really going to run it off solar per se. It's going to have to go through conversion to... Uh, AC from DC. You're going to need a battery pack. There's, I, I can do the math for you. And uh, Sue, if you wanted to chat offline, I'd be happy to work through and give you an exact number uh, on how much battery, uh, solar, uh, how big of an inverter you would need to make this all work. Uh, I'd be more than happy to do that for you. Um, if you want to drop me an email uh, and we can chat a little bit offline and that might be a good uh, way to, uh, um, you know, we can talk about that next week on the stream uh, is uh, uh, trying to run a solar, uh, I should say AC off solar power. Um, it, it, can, it, it will be expensive. I will just warn you right now. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, uh, Linda, uh, you probably, in your small rig, I don't know that a mini split would be the way I would go. I think I would just go with a window AC. A mini split's going to be a lot more expensive than a $250 window type AC unit. And for a smaller RV, it sh that should probably be enough. Um, the other thing you can do is get the hell out of Arizona. <laughs> I know you're in Phoenix and I, you probably have family and kids there, but get out of Arizona. That's what I used to do. I just chased the 70 degree weather. Uh, okay. CNS Schooley, they got us off marketplace for like 400. It was used twice. Wow. So that's another good place to look is on uh, Facebook marketplace. Uh, it sounds like, uh, they got a great deal. Uh, yeah, none of them are really that efficient. I totally agree with you, CNS. Uh, Gary comments, Camp Gore, he has a predator, and so far I've stayed ahead of him. Uh, if I am not here next week, you know what happened. <laughs> Camp Gore, I have a predator too. <laughs> You're too funny, Gary. Uh, yeah, so Sue, kick me an email. 
Uh, we'll talk about your mini split and I'll get some information from you. And then uh, I'll put together a real quick presentation on how to do the math. And we'll do the math and see just exactly how much uh, solar battery, charge controller, everything else you would need to be able to run solar off of uh, off grid. Basically, is what you're doing, right? And you want to run it off grid. Uh, yeah, an aluminum panel to surround the generator. Yeah, you know, you'd probably be better off. I mean, if you want to do something like that, get yourself a couple of, you know. Uh, quarter inch sheets of plywood and a little bit of insulation and just build yourself some insulated panels uh, and kind of surround it with that but those predators are loud the, the predators the champions were really loud the, the somebody was telling me and I don't remember who it was um, that the uh, there's the one one of them that uh, Harbor Freight sells that's not too bad it's not very, you know, it's not really loud. That's a good point, Aaron, and I meant to mention that earlier, but uh, Aaron just commented that if you see someone here that you don't know, take a moment to head over to their channel and watch a video. If they have a channel, leave them a comment, uh, become their friend. They'll, they might just do the same. I know that um, I, I try to shout out to folks that uh, provide and make good content and then have a channel that I know of. And so, yeah, it's a community, and it's a safe community. There are no dumb questions. The only dumb question is a question that didn't get asked. Okay, uh, Camp, uh, Linda, Camp Goer. Uh, is there an AC that warms too? Yeah, it's called a heat pump, and some mini splits will do that. Uh, some, some mini splits do AC, uh, cooling and heating, uh, but... You're, you're getting into some money there then. If you start to look to get into a heat pump that will uh, uh, heat and cool, um, um, you're talking about some money there. Now, on, on my RV and probably on a lot of Class A's that people don't know this, but your air conditioners are heat pumps. Uh, they, they have the what they call the reverser valve inside, which turns them backwards. And so instead of cooling, they'll heat. And down to about 40 degrees outside, my heat pumps work great. Uh, but below about 40, they don't work so good. Now, you got to also keep in mind that my air conditioning units are, what, 15, 16 years old now. Uh, and I've, I've done regular maintenance on them. Uh, shameless self-plug. There is a video on my channel about how to maintain your RV's AC units. Uh, feel free to just run over to my channel and... Uh, and look in the RV how-to playlist. Uh, there's about 45 odd videos in there that you might find uh, valuable. Uh, but yeah, that's called a heat pump, and some ACs will do that. I know that I have the uh, the Medic. I don't remember the model numbers, but uh, a lot of the uh, roof type ACs, uh, if it's the right model, will will do uh, work as a heat pump as well. Uh, okay, looking to get out of Phoenix. That's a good idea. I'm just teasing you. I hope you got a good sense of humor. <laughs> yeah, mini split, 650 to 1,000. That sounds about right. Uh, Gary Boyd, if you have to replace roof airs, mini split is the way to go for sure. And then you can get rid of those roof airs, uh, gain headroom and quieter. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, a lot of folks I've noticed, especially like in the bus community, and, and like I said, I'm a build nerd, so I watch a lot of uh, bus builds. Uh, the mini splits are really popular. I know that uh, Wes, Transcend Existence, um, he's the guy that does all the roof raises out there. Uh, he does. He's not very active on YouTube. You'll see a video from him every once in a while, but he's on Instagram, and I follow him there, and he's constantly always doing a roof raise on a bus. But he has a mini split, and then I think Chris, uh, what's his channel... I don't remember, but there's an. I know there's another bus guy out there that put a mini split on his. Uh, okay, let's see. Oh wow, we're running eight oh four, so we're coming right up on an hour. And um, so we're just gonna do. We'll do last call for questions. All um, that's as close as I could get to last call for alcohol. 
Uh, okay, let's just go through here real quick. And yeah, wood surround would be better. Could use aluminum, use insulation and muffle. Uh, one, it's six, six of one, half a dozen of the other uh, camp goer. Um, I think wood's easier to work with uh, and, and might, well, and as mentioned, as Aaron mentioned, might still be cheaper. I checked Lumber Futures today. It's, it's up over $1,400 per thousand board feet right now. That's five times what it was last year at this time. That's for uh, raw lumber. Um, uh, and it's food oriented. Okay, so uh, you're into food, Gary. Um, <laughs> yeah, sheet of plywood is like gold. Oh, she says she's got some in her garage. Well, you might be sitting on a gold mine, Camp Gore. Uh, yes, I know about a thousand for the unit. Okay, probably couldn't run it on my generator, though. Yeah, um, I don't know. Many splits are pretty efficient. They don't pull a lot of power. Which is why a lot of people who are trying to go off grid in the buses are using the mini splits. They find that uh, they they're they're pretty power efficient. Uh, but once again, if you're going to run AC off grid, you better have deep pockets because you're going to be into it for a lot of capacity for batteries and a lot of solar. But uh, I'm going to work with um, with uh, Sue, and uh, we'll present what we find next week. Uh, on next week's stream. So be sure and tune in for that. Can't, <laughs> Linda says, I just need a man to help you. Yeah. Um, okay, Sue, great. I'm looking forward to getting your email and we'll chat back and forth and I'll throw something together for next week and we'll look at, uh, you know, the idea of running a, a AC any kind of AC, whether it be a window type or because the math is pretty much all the same. But I'll put that all together and we'll share that with you next week. Dream on wheels. Uh, okay, uh, looks like uh, you and uh, CS Schooley have uh, swapped uh, uh, subscriptions. That's great. I'm not familiar with your channel, Dream On, um, but I will. Uh, I'll, I'll come out and check you out. Because, uh, like I said, I'm a. Um, I'm a build nerd. I love watching uh, people build their uh, rigs out. Uh, yeah, Gary, a mini split you can buy for cheaper than two roof airs. The main problem, I think, with putting in a mini split like on a Class A like mine is then you got two roof holes to fill. And um, and to patch and to keep so they don't leak and and those sorts of things, uh, but yeah, you know, uh, um, I think mini splits are a good thing. Sue says I have my ears on making fire and dinner. Great, uh, Gary. Thanks. Oh, thank you, Gary. Thank you very much. You know, uh, Gary, you've been around for quite a while. And I love all my older, well, I love all my subscribers, all 30,000 and change of you now. And uh, so it's, it's, awful, it's awful nice that you come along and everybody's so kind, uh, supportive, and it's quite humbling. So thank you. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, amazing, isn't it? 30,000. Happy camping, happy place camping. Uh, that's where I always am when I'm camping is my happy place. Uh, we have portable AC in our cargo build. It works pretty well. We did all the proper venting, uh, we, but we don't run on solar. Yeah, um, again, the, the main problem is is that AC suck down a huge amount of um, juice. And so you got to have a, a, a short beep ton of battery and an equal amount of solar to be able to charge those batteries. Uh, but you'll get to see it all next week. Uh, Sue and I will do a really good job for you. And uh, um, it'll be fun. It'll be a fun little experiment to do next week. I think we're going to wrap things up here. One last goal, one last call. It took me about three years, Dream on Wheels. 
Comic relief. I'm here all week. Yeah. <laughs> Gary. Thank you, uh, CNS. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to share. Um, I'm happy to comment on other folks' videos. Please take the comments. They're not meant to, to be derogatory or uh, condescending. Um, you know, they, they come from, uh, you know, a, a genuine point of trying to make things better for you. A lot of times, though, I know it's kind of difficult to comment because, uh, you know, by the time the video's there, the project or that particular piece of the project's done, and then you've moved on to something else. And so, you know, it's it kind of it maybe is a little silly to comment on, on something like that, but I do it anyway. Um, you know, there's always next time, right? Okay. Last go round. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. It was an amazing week and another great live stream. Be sure and tell your friends. This is a safe place. There is no dumb questions. Um, you might get some dumb answers, but there are no dumb questions. Thanks, everybody. I sure do appreciate it. Be sure to give me that thumbs up if you're so inclined. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. If you're not subscribed, I do the live stream every Tuesday night, 7 p.m. Mountain Time. Try to keep it to less than an hour or around an hour. And... Uh, my website at trbolin.com, your support of my Amazon store, and I am done. Thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend. Uh, what's left of the week, and we will see you next Tuesday. Until we get together again, peace. Bye-bye.